some people will communicate just from their head. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, other people can't feel the trust for them in their body. Yeah. So the information doesn't get in. But when someone communicates from their head and the passion of their heart, then all of a sudden people are like, oh, oh, wow. Welcome, Garrison. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I just met you this morning, mm -hmm. um, but I'm super stoked for the conversation that we're about to have here on the Freedom Culture Podcast, because mm -hmm. um, you've been telling me a little bit about what you do, and it has so much to do with truth and alignment and authenticity, and this is actually something that has been coming through. We just came out of a mastermind, mm -hmm. and it's something that's been coming through for me a lot yeah. um, throughout the, the mastermind. It's something that I've been working with, getting comfortable in my own truth and letting that be seen. And so I am super excited for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just like falling into place. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So for the general audience, yes. um, what is what is the name of your brand, company? Hmm. What, yeah. Uh, right now, my brand company is simply my name, GarrisonCohen.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But then there's, what does all that stand for? Like, yeah. what is, what is GarrisonCohen.com about? And, you know, as we were just talking a minute ago, what I do is I work with thought leaders, visionaries, business leaders, people who are up to really significant work in being a part of the shift of consciousness mm -hmm. on the planet in any way. And what I do is I help those people tell the story of who they are and what they do mm -hmm. in a way that has audiences just say, oh, yes, this person gets it and they're owning it. Yeah. And what they're saying makes sense on a level that I feel inside of myself. Yeah. And so <clears throat> when I work with those people, um, what I do is the, the focus of it all is on a tremendous level of, of depth mm -hmm. and authenticity. And I'd love to say a little bit about how the whole neurological system works regarding this, because a lot of people don't realize. Oh man, I love stuff like that, so go for it, right. dive in. So the first thing is that people, most people think that a speech is I speak about my ideas and others consider from their perspective if they like it or not or it's worthy or whatever. Yeah. That's what people think that's what people think the purpose of the speech is. Mm -hmm. But it's so far from that. In reality, a speech is a conversation between nervous systems. Mm -hmm. And so this has to do with a biological security system that is you know, as old as humans are. Because the way it all started off, we, uh, we actually think we've got one brain when in truth we have three brains all on top of each other. Okay. So the first brain that formed early in humanity was the reptilian brain. Mm -hmm. And that is about the size of a golf ball. And it's all about survival, food, sleep, shelter, just keeping the body alive pretty much. And then after millions of years, the, um, the limbic brain grew on top of that. So imagine like a, um, yeah, imagine like a bowling ball, and then you wrap your hand around the bowling ball, and there's the reptilian brain and the limbic brain. And the limbic brain is all about um, feeling and sensation and knowing the difference between pleasure and pain and um, being able to, to feel like intense emotions. Mm -hmm. And then after millions of years, again, the neocortex grew on top of the limbic brain. And the neocortex is the logical brain that allows us to really think and strategize and move through the world. What's really interesting about this is that when someone is speaking, if the reptilian brain, which is the most powerful brain, despite the fact that it's so small, if the reptilian brain does not recognize the speaker as a friend, it will literally trigger the neocortex to shut down to new information. And it will do that in the form of um, doubt, fear, um, um, judgment, like all these ways it will literally cast mental blocks towards the person who's speaking in order to protect itself from new information coming in because the reptilian brain is like, whoa, this doesn't feel safe. Huh. That's, so, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> and so 
it's really fascinating because some people will get up on stage and they'll be nervous, they'll be unsure of themselves, they'll be really in their head. And other people in the audience, their, neo, their reptilian brain is like, they can't pay attention mm -hmm. because they can't feel it on that reptilian body level. Yeah. And so when I work with people on their speaking, what we do is we look at telling their story from the depth of their truth, yeah. from the depth of their authenticity, because mm -hmm. that creates the vulnerability in their system that other people's nervous systems can relax open and say, oh, okay, this isn't a threat. He's actually vulnerable. Yeah. And it's such an interesting design of human nature because what it means is that if we truly want to be heard in the world, we cannot help but to evolve. Mm -hmm. It's like we can't stop our evolution yeah. if we're in our truth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I'm having a major like, kind of like before when I had that aha moment earlier when we were talking <laughs> offline. <laughs> I'm having another one of those. It's like you have like debates and discussions and all these things, but if if the person across from you is a threat to you, then you can debate till you're blue in the face, totally. but they're obviously not receiving that information because their brains aren't allowing it to sink in yeah. and for them. And so unless you're going to take it calmly and just be like, okay, let me just explain my side and I don't, I don't know how you're the expert in that area, but uh -huh. unless there's a certain way you do it, they're not actually going to receive the information to even ponder what it means to them. Yeah. Yeah. So well, the, w the way that looks is that some people will communicate just from their head. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, other people can't feel the trust for them in their body. Yeah. So the information doesn't get in. But when someone communicates from their head and the passion of their heart, then all of a sudden people are like, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. They have that experience and they, they take the information in. And then when someone is really connected uh, to their root and to the ground, you know, their grounding as a person, mm -hmm. then it's like all green lights. Yeah. And people in audiences are moved by that. People in audience are, are so hungry for that because yeah. we've lived so long without that mm. that when that shows up, people feel their whole systems light up. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost getting so lately, or at least on my Facebook um, feed, yeah. spoken words becoming such a big thing where people are, you know, it's it's poetic and it's emotional and it's people like pouring out their hearts and stuff and it's becoming such, I'm getting more and more of them that are showing up, people are resharing and I'm guessing it's for that exact reason because mm -hmm. they're, it's it's intellectually, they're speaking their piece, but then emotionally they're, they're present, they're there, they're using their bodies oftentimes even while they're speaking to to express that yeah. and so so yeah obviously it's coming across and that's why everybody's like oh this is amazing you need to reshare it because they're emotionally connecting to the message because of everything that that person's doing like the whole package mm -hmm. so then you do this with companies yeah well I do it mostly with entrepreneurs okay but yeah I mean any company who's up to good in the world and maybe the CEO yeah. wants to speak on a world stage mm -hmm. I would help them I basically interview them, yeah. deep dive interview for many hours, audio record it, transcribe it, and then I go through that, and interviewing is my superpower, so we really go into the depths of who they are, yeah. because it's so important for their humanity mm -hmm. to come through in their words, yeah. so people can really feel the depth of their spirit, because you can't fake that. Yeah. And I, I want to give you a, a good example. Can I, can I actually play with you a little bit here and ask you some questions Go for it. Yeah, to let's, illustrate let's something? Let's play with this. Okay, yep. great. So here's a question that I really like to ask, mm -hmm. which is that, and I'll, I'll explain more as we go on. The question is, for you, what was something that you did as a little girl mm -hmm. that you or your family or your childhood friends would look back on and say, oh my gosh, that was so you to do. So me. Yeah, something that was your, like your own, nature. yeah, innate, yeah. unique essence of you. That was so you. I used to sing a lot as a kid. Oh yeah? Yeah, so when my dad would push me on the swing and we'd make up songs together, or one time um, uh, we were in church and my aunt and uncle were in charge of like closing up the church. It was like a volunteer thing. Um, so everybody had left and my aunt's about to lock up the church and she's like, what's that noise? And so she goes around and I'm sitting on the toilet singing and my parents had forgot me. <laughs> 
Um, and I was just singing away, waiting for somebody to come by and like wipe my ass. I don't know what uh -huh. exactly. Um, but yeah, so I would be constantly singing or making up songs yeah. or yeah. So I think wow. I think maybe that. That's great. That's great. <laughs> that is freaking adorable. <laughs> so as a kid doing that and just singing and especially just clearly you like you're sitting on the toilet seat yeah. in the bat in this teeny little room by yourself just completely amusing yourself <laughs> by just singing yeah yeah what what was the experience of that for you what was it that filled you with so much joy to do that what was so great about it um what is so great about i don't know i guess it's just such a profound expression of emotion uh -huh. and generally I don't know I tend to be quite a happy a happy person and so as a kid I'm guessing it was similar and then it was yeah how I, I could express and like I said my dad and I would write songs and they were all like you know I like I know why God made all these animals I, I grew up Christian obviously I love these stories. Yeah. Um, I know why God made all these animals but I don't know why he made mosquitoes for example or another one was a song about like sharing and caring and like you, sh you should share with your friends and family and okay. like all these. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So take a look at here's who you were as a kid. Mm -hmm. And here you are many years later mm -hmm. as an adult and your tastes and your opinions and your perspectives and your judgments and your entire view of the world, all of that has completely changed. Mm -hmm. And yet that essence of who you were then mm -hmm. is always the thing that is still true now in some way. Yeah. So how does that show up? How does that essence that you were as a little girl show up in your life today? That essence. Um, that. It's a challenging question. How does that show up? I think I, I laugh a lot. Uh -huh. I'm like constantly. Yesterday somebody was. I had said something funny and I was laughing. He's like, "Oh, I'm glad you make you laugh." I was like, "Oh, I'm so easy." He was just like, "Oh, I thought I was funny, but." Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it is. So then let's just dial deeper into that real quick, mm -hmm. which is that it seems like there's a part of you that is consistently connected to some kind of joy. Mm -hmm. is yeah, that, is I that could agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So here's, here where, here's where all of this goes. Who you were mm -hmm. when you were very young and doing things without even thinking about it, just the natural expression of your essence, it's the part of you that never changes. Yeah. And so now, if you were to speak about some mission you have, mm -hmm. ideally, if you are on path, it's going to be connected to your essence because it's your greatest mm -hmm. gift. Yeah. You know, like, you're here to bring joy to the world. Yeah. I mean, how, how, how <laughs> obvious is that, right? Yeah. You bring joy to the world. Even, I even, hope so, yeah. Yeah, even in this podcast, just like it's a part of who you are. Yeah. And so when you, as an example, can talk about, listen, I want to tell you a story of who I, of who I was when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. and then you go on to your mission of how that connects in some way, people yeah. instantly know you more because they can feel the depth of truth in that. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes very quickly clear, of course that's who you are. Yeah. Like, of course that's what you're masterful at without even really even needing to think about it so much. Yeah. And so when you speak about that and you speak about something that's so deeply aligned with you, it's just, it's just clear. It just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's just clear. It's, you can't debate that. So then, because I feel like this process went quite simple. I mean, I know you go in a lot more depth, but what's, what's something that you run up against when you're trying to work with people, like a, a wall that you have to work through? Is there one that, a common one, or is it so different? That's a really interesting question. You know, because I really, I, I really only work with people mm -hmm. who are passionate mm -hmm. about their work or passionate about figuring out what their work is, as long as that passion is there, yeah. there's, so, there's just a world of information mm -hmm. inside of that that can be created into art. And that, that art that gets, it gets created into is literally just a vehicle for who they are and their expression in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's really... Um, I find that I, I wake entrepreneurs up to who they really are mm -hmm. by reflecting back to them what their mission is so clearly mm -hmm. that it's just like, even for them, they have the experience of, oh my God, 
Yes, exactly. That's what it is. And when they feel that, then they can own it. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can own this shit. Yeah, embody it fully. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what has other people be like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. I, I feel that. Yeah. And that's, I mean, what a, what a great world to live in where everybody has access to speak such a deep level of truth from, from the core of who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Do you find, obviously you work with people who are super, like, stoked to um, share their message and to, you said, like, you work with people who are passionate about, like, working in truth and sharing their message. When you're out, we're at a festival here, Envision Festival, um, or just out in the world, um, do you find you can catch on quickly when people are, you're like, oh man, you're like so off color, it's just not funny kind of thing? You know, that's, that's interesting you say that. I rarely, I, I rarely come into the space of those people. It's kind of like, you know, I... If I was a magnet, yeah. and my the people I work with are magnets, it's like we just seem naturally drawn to each other. And um, yeah, people who just don't resonate with that message just rarely seem to come into my space. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. interesting. Like so you attract, you essentially attract, I mean, they say that, I guess. You, you attract what you are, what you think, or... Um, what you believe, yeah. and so you're literally doing that also just in, in work and who you want to work with. So that's what it sounds like, at least. For sure. And you know yeah. what's really interesting is that, you know, I've, I've been on my own journey over the course of the last year and just letting go of my home, putting everything in storage, and doing this work while traveling the world. Huh. And I've let go of so many things from my life that the level of clarity that I bring when I'm working with someone uh, I'm an exquisitely clean mirror mm -hmm. for someone to see how amazing they are and yeah. and how potent their message really is. So I can't remember if I mentioned at the beginning, but I, I, I do this in the form of writing TED Talks. Okay, no, you hadn't mentioned that yet. Oh, hello, okay. hi. Oh, hi, yeah. We should so get the interview started. <laughs> so yes, I do this in the form of writing TED Talks for yeah. my clients. Okay. And I take them through the whole process of of interviewing them, writing it for them doing several reviews with them to make sure it's super dialed in like their own like little Iron Man outfit that's just like yeah. oh they can fly and they can shoot and they're powerful yeah and then we do several sessions around um, teaching them coaching them on how to really step into it and own it I mean it literally becomes their superhero suit this speech yeah and that's really exciting because when you find what you're here to do and you feel that you can speak about it with passion and and heart yeah i mean how much better does it get yeah you know? yeah no that's pretty awesome so you said you sell you sold your house you put everything in storage so you're really starting to live the freedom culture pretty as a much nomad. yeah 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 what inspired that oh man <sighs> it's a it's a there's a very long backstory to it okay. but the the short version mm -hmm. is that i I decided to really explore the parts of myself that I was afraid to go to mm -hmm. and really create home in that place. Um, you know, I, I had had a, a real fear of loneliness and I decided, you know what, this has been a persistent fear for so long, I'm just going to go and put myself in the loneliest possible place and just choose to live there for a while. And I, uh, I just came to peace with it and began to even see the incredible beauty that I'd never even seen in, in that space. And my life just started to change. I, uh, things that weren't a match for me just started to fall out of my life until my entire home fell out of my life. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, I guess I'm letting go. I guess I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. So wow, that's it's been a miraculous year. How long ago is it? Oh, a year? It was, uh, well, it was March, middle of March last year. Oh, okay. So almost a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So then having experienced that for a year and doing what you do, I'm going to ask you one final question before we close. Bring it. What... What do you say the words freedom culture embody for you or mean to you? Like, if you think about them at your core, yeah. and now you've been 
freed from something that a fear that you've had for a long time. Mm. You work with people helping them free themselves from their blocks about who they really are. Yeah. So what, yeah, I'm curious to hear. So what does freedom culture mean to me? Yeah. I think it's, for me, in this moment, for the first time, <laughs> yeah. for me it is, um, you know, clearly life by design, mm -hmm. but but even inside of that, anyone can just design their life. It's a very particular life by design, which is which is culture, community, um, being a part. Freedom culture specifically, being part of a community who has a vision for what life can really be like in terms of making use of the best of community but also the best of technology and the best of spirituality yeah. you know I, I often say let's let's make this awesome yeah you know and I think that um, the thing about humans and especially the entrepreneur mm -hmm. is that first of all all humans have a deep inner longing to free themselves from suffering yeah. of every form which fuels every field of technology at the core of it is the desire to free ourselves from suffering make our lives more and more comfortable and I feel that the people who are entrepreneurs are the people who are so committed to that freedom that they're willing to look into the depths of themselves to know themselves so fully mm -hmm. that when they speak about their work they're just so aligned with truth that the future can't not create itself exactly that way that's beautiful i love that thank you thank you thank you thank you for this and garrisoncohen.com yes we'll put links in the comments oh, and you. twitter and facebook and whatever else you Love can it. be found on thank you so much for your time this is brilliant i love this thank you thank you